tonight, family and activists band together to demand justice for Kimberly DeLeo one year after she was shot and killed in her own home. Transport Minister Guy Joseph takes staff of the Department of Transport to task for not doing their jobs. And the opposition doubles down on the government on the issue of the horse racing track, but Guy Joseph fires his retort. We have the details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Joseph. Good night. It is Tuesday, the 29th of October, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We're on Flow Channel 117 also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio. You can also watch on our website, it's www.caribbeanhottv.com or watch on our free Caribbean Hot FM mobile app. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph, thank you for joining us. On the 29th of October, 2018, a beloved daughter and mother of two were shot in the head inside her own home. De Leon, who worked as an accountant in the Ministry of Education, was 42 years old at the time of her death. One year later, no one has been charged with her murder. It is a situation that her still grieving family and local activists say is unacceptable. Kimberly DeLeo had made reports of domestic violence and her estranged husband, a member of the police force, was initially questioned by police at the start of the investigation. On the one year anniversary of her death, her mother says she has not received any recent update on the case from the police force. Activists and concerned citizens banded with the family and descended on the city demanding justice for Kimberly DeLeo after her mother and other family laid a wreath at her grave. We join Rochelle Gonzalez, who is currently on site at the demonstration. On the night of October 29, 2018, 42-year-old mother of two, Kimberly DeLeon, was shot and killed in her own home. One year later, her family members are still asking for justice. So, in commemoration of her death, a small group of activists have gathered at Serenity Park to demand justice and to drive the message home. President of Raise Your Voice St. Lucia, Catherine Seeley, said the main message of today's march is to ensure that Kimberly's death does not turn out to be a cold case. Today is one year since Kimberly DeLeo died, um, or should I say, was killed in her home and um, in collaboration with her family and her mother, we are hosting a vigil in her memory and um, we do this to, so that we can keep people aware that this woman has been killed and there has not been any arrest, any charges laid and we want to make sure that it doesn't become a cold case and it doesn't become another statistics. We have 314 unsolved murders in St. Lucia between 2000, uh, 2000 and, and now and we do recognize that it's a small population and 313 unsolved murder is a lot and we do this to keep awareness and to also support the family because they're still grieving they have not received any closure and and we want to to make sure that Kimberly receives justice because I do not believe um, going into somebody's home who has no enemies no no out issues no outstanding issues no problems with anybody and get shot at their home and to die and leave two young children and a mother who grieves day by day is justified something needs to be done one aunt of the late kimberly de leon josie williams said one year of no justice has been a bitter pill to swallow it is very hard it is hard broken it is sudden that up to now we haven't heard anything it's a run around, it's a run around, it's a run around. And it is honestly, it is very, very, very frustrating. So people have to put themselves in our shoes to see how we really feel because it is really sad. Because Kimberly was such a pure hearted person. Loved her kids, loved her job, and would not compromise her job, whether for family or for friends. And for somebody to cut her life short. I'm telling you, and up to now nothing, it is very heartbreaking. Meanwhile, another aunt of the late Kimberly De Leon, Rosalind Williams, said the hardest part of it all is observing the children growing up without their mother. It's sad. It's tough. I see the kids every day growing without their mother. It's tough. It's really hard. Honestly, one year later, nothing. 
The arrests have been made, nothing, so we would like something to be done, justice to be served. The gathering of the small crowd signaled hope for justice for a life gone too soon. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Thank you very much, Rochelle. Speaker of the House Andy Daniel has been summoned to appear before the court in an action filed by constitutional lawyer Martinus Francois. It relates to the non-appointment of a deputy speaker. Daniel is, a, is to appear in court on Thursday, the 31st of October. He disclosed that he was served by Francois himself on Sunday. Francois is contending that Parliament should have by now appointed a deputy speaker. A three to six month wait for licenses has people frustrated and even getting in trouble with the law. Transport Minister Guy Joseph is expressing disappointment and anger towards the Transport Department over the issues. He says the blame for such shortcomings always seem to land on the minister's back. However, he says the real culprits are getting none of the blame. I have been very disappointed as the Minister of Transport and I, I am not accepting the excuses being given by the department. There are persons employed by the government. The government wage bill is over $400 million a year. So if you look at the percentage of pay for ministers, is minimal in comparison to that. But it looks like everything that does not happen is a minister of government that's responsible for it not happening. And when I'm told there are no ribbons and, um, for the ink and they run out of this and they run out of that, you know what we have had to do? Just forget about the old system that was there and get a new printer to be able to print driver's license. Joseph says through his intervention, the matter is being sorted out, although there is still a critical problem with the printing of licenses. As of last week, I had a meeting. I said, but we have the ID card placed there. They have all the printing machines. Have anybody taken a step to try and find out whether we can get the National ID Card Office to print the driver's license for us, rather than telling people that we have to wait for three months and six months, and when you go there, you still cannot get a driver's license? So, so these are the challenges that we are facing when people are not carrying out their responsibility in the manner that it should be carried out. As of the 3rd of January, we have the commitment that we are going online for the renewal of driver's license. We would have a new machine that would be able to print all of the driver's license um, within instantly. In other words, when you go and pay your driver's license, Within 10 minutes, you should be able to walk out with your driver's license. That was Transport Minister Guy Joseph. Two members of the opposition say Lucia Labour Party are sticking to the narrative that Prime Minister Alan Chastney has his priorities all wrong. Whilst they say horse racing in St. Lucia is not a bad thing, they are convinced that there are more pressing issues to take care of. The social media term, hashtag horses before hospitals, has been gaining popularity via the World Wide Web, whilst members of the United Workers Party administration have remained steadfast in denying the claims made by the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party, which accused the government of placing the National Day horse race higher on the priority list than the state of the island's healthcare system. On the morning of Tuesday, the 29th of October, it was no different as Denry North MP Sean Edwards said, whilst he is not against the initiative being brought to St. Lucia, he is left to wonder why now when there is so much more to be done which is of more importance. I think it's really a, a representation of the, the, the government not having its priorities, right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with horse racing, but when you can give priority to horse racing and um, making um, facilities available for horses to come and gallop in St. Lucia at a time when your health facilities are in such a dilapidated state. Um, only yesterday you heard from the National Youth Council as it relates to the conditions of certain schools in this country. So. It just speaks to the fact that the government does not have its priorities right. And as I said, it is really a travesty that at a time when there's so many um, schools and playing fields and other um, public infrastructure that need attention, the government prefers to put resources into horse racing and a horse racing track. Edward was followed up by Viewfort North MP Moses Jabatis, who echoed the same sentiment. Jabatis went a step further by questioning the legitimacy of the horse racing track, saying he believes it's a sham. It's, it's amazing that our money will pay for all of this horse racing 
our money will pay for the purchase of the horses and they are asking us now to purchase these same horses that our money is paid for or will pay for. So it is, it is, I believe this is all a scam. This is almost like a Ponzi scheme because I have not seen any documents or I have not heard any reports from the international agencies that regulate horse racing like the Organization of World Animal Health, OIE, and the other organizations of that regulate horse racing. I have not heard them um, certify the, the races that will come as international races. Shabatis said he awaits the official announcement from the international agencies so that he can believe in the racetrack's legitimacy. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Meanwhile, Guy Joseph says it makes no sense in accusing the government of having their priorities mixed up where horses and hospitals are concerned. He says the government has nothing to do with the horse racing track. At the same time, he says private investments should not be halted in order for government initiatives to be completed. Castri Southeast MP Guy Joseph has responded to accusations thrown at the government of St. Lucia by members of the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party. Sticking to their narrative, the opposition reiterated their beliefs that the government has been prioritizing the horse racing track over the health needs of the people of St. Lucia. On Tuesday morning in the House of Assembly, Joseph questioned the logic behind the SLP's statement, saying they make no sense. What is the relationship between the horse racing and what the work of the government is. The, the horse racing is a private sector investment. So should all private sector investment in the country stop because government is not doing certain things that it's supposed to be doing? I mean, this type of reasoning, if politicians want to score political points, they must come up with things that make sense. Joseph highlighted an example of what he claims was the opposition practicing the same actions which they are now condemning. If I were to ask the government, how did they find $68 million to be able to start um, the administrative building in Viewfort? Wasn't the hospital more, more important than the administrative building? And that was government expenditure. That was not private sector expenditure. So, you know, people must pick the things that they are going to, to speak about that make sense. Um, there's no relationship between a private investor. So if a private investor comes to build a hotel or, or build some development, so should we say that Carnival Cruise Lines and Royal, and, and Royal Caribbean should not come and build a port in Viewfort because the hospital is not completed? In response to his statement, the minister was asked whether every private investor should require the use of government's PR resources, as was done during the official launch of the horse racing track recently. To this, Joseph declined to respond, well, in public anyway. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Still to come, Infrastructure Minister Stevenson King says although the responsibility for school infrastructure does not fall under his jurisdiction, he is not happy about the conditions that teachers and students face daily. Concerns are expressed about the growing issue with narcotics use among youth and Saban and Mighty put their stamp on Junek 2019. Stay with us. Those stories and more are coming up after the break.